Hello, and, and welcome to the, the final case analysis I'd like to do for mastering the edentulous patient. This case is a very popular a treatment type, the all-on-4. Here where we're using only four implants. Uh, we're also using a hybrid restoration, which is pretty standard for the all-on-4 technique. We're doing it in the maxilla, which to me is the most difficult arch to be doing this sort of treatment on because of phonetic problems, aesthetic issues, lip support, all the factors that really complicate restoring the edentulous maxilla. So I think it, it creates its own interest from that point. This patient was one of those classic patients that went on and on and on and never quite could commit to treatment, even though he had a failing a natural dentition that needed something to be done. And so basically he waited and waited. We considered doing all on 25, and that wasn't cost effective. We thought about doing all on two. We know that wouldn't work. All on four zygomatic implants, not something we're necessarily looking for. So what are we doing here? Uh, we realize it's the maxilla. The mandible has reduced concerns about airflow, food bolus, restriction of the hygiene access. That's easier in the mandible. We don't have to worry about lip support and aesthetics in the mandible. Resorptive patterns in the mandible are easier to manage. All these factors are much more complicated in the maxilla. So I encourage you to be very careful about assuming that you can do an all-on-4 case in the maxilla unless the patient accepts all of these challenges, which might be a lack of lip support, airflow flowing over the top of a hybrid restoration, which is a super gingival design. It's not subgingival. So when we have those issues, you need to talk to the patient or at least evaluate them in a way that you're sure they'll accept this treatment. For treatment planning, we'd love to prepare for surgery. We'll evaluate existing denture, all those things we've talked about before. We'll make sure it makes sense. This patient still had natural dentition, failing natural dentition. Is that the incisal lead position? At least evaluate where they're at. Some horrible bridge might have been done that's at the wrong vertical dimension. We need to know that before we get into implant placement. Then the surgeon can place the implants. We still like to use a surgical guide, if possible, to help them get them in the right position. We'll have a healing phase. It usually means that we'll have an immediate denture. We'll soft line, although we can do implant-supported provisionals, as we've demonstrated in previous cases. And then the final restoration. So this is the case that I've been talking about. We have a six-unit anterior bridge held in place by two remaining canines. We've lost bones surrounding them. Number six has been infected, potentially a problem, and he's been resisting treatment. Until finally, he was in a lot of pain, and he wanted the treatment to be done right away. And the surgeon made the commitment to go ahead and just do the treatment somewhat on an immediate basis. This is a patient that was on Coumadin treatment and other blood thinners. Still, it was a challenge and went ahead and do it. So it's not unsurprising to have the patient have considerable bruising, uh, uh, swelling, all sorts of issues that really were brought about because they chose to do the treatment on their time frame. I think it would have been better to get those teeth out and wear a denture for a while, you know, eliminate the infection, not be on Coumadin, get all those things controlled but this is what happens when really the patient dictates the treatment. Uh, the implants were placed. Uh, it not, maybe not even surprising, we did lose one implant within the first month, right in this area, and another implant was placed, actually even in a better position from an anterior-posterior spread. So this extended the treatment healing phase until we were ready to restore. This is actually a very good AP spread for the maxilla. We were able to maintain quite a bit of the residual bone. So we had lost bone, we have restorative space, but we didn't want it to get carried away. The first step is really to determine where the implants are. Now, some people at this point connect multi-unit abutments, myris cones, you know, some sort of an abutment that carries the implant level up to the tissue. And I, I think I'd be the first to say that makes it easier. But we're trying to control costs and make a one-piece framework that goes directly to the head of the implant. So we're going to look at that as just an alternative to maybe the standard view. So we'll use closed tray impression copings that connect directly to the head of the implants. This can be done in a few minutes. They're screwed on. We'll take some x-rays to be sure they're fully seated. And you notice those are hex-headed implants, which is actually a very nice way to manage these cases because it has such a wide path of insertion 
where we don't have to worry about implants being very parallel. That's the last thing you want on an all on four technique. We make sure they're seated, take x-rays, take an alginate impression. Why do we want to use alginate at this point? Even though it's a closed tray impression, sometimes because of the large path of insertion of the two different impression copings, it's hard to get it out of the mouth. And you notice it even tore the alginate a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and carefully reconstruct that. I put the same impression coping back into the same place I took it out of with good analogs, and we'll pour a preliminary model. I know this isn't accurate, but it's going to help make the next step easier on a difficult patient. We can analyze the angulation, so we have a preliminary model. We'll go ahead and connect on the preliminary model our open tray impression copings. So I guess the bottom line is you could say, uh, after a lot of hard work and a lot of communication with the patient, Mr. Happy truly is, and it's been a great transformation from him. So we began with two residual teeth. We really looked at the amount of interclusal space required. So even though it's an all-on-four technique, we knew we were doing a hybrid. We knew, we knew we needed a certain amount of interclusal space, and sometimes more the better. We lost an implant early on. It was replaced. Following all the rules of having distal angulation to the implant, so we have a big AP spread, and we were able to finish the case in a way I think that was very satisfactory to the patient kept costs under control, and gave him the results he was hoping to have. This isn't the result we want to have for our patients. Thank you very much. It's nice to spend time with you. For more education programs, visit the Guide Institute at www.guidedental.com.